Okay, I'm going to demonstrate installing the bind DNS server and creating a forward zone. So first of all, we need to have the software installed. So you can do a yum install the bind software. This will download your DNS server and create some basic template files you can work on to make your DNS server run. All right. Once this is done, we can go into the configuration files. The main configuration files are stored in the etc directory. And uh, the DNS server is called named. So we're really looking for the named. So go over to etc, do nano on named. So this is a named.com file. Currently, it is configured to listen only on the local loopback. We want to change it to listening on any interface. So we change this to any, and we change the colon colon one also to any. So we're listening on the local loopback for, well, we're listening on all interfaces. Um, we also want to allow queries from anybody, not just localhost. So any queries, um, we have to decide if we want to do recursion. Now, um, we want to probably do recursion because that makes it so that everything works better. So we'll just leave that in there. All right. Next, we want to create our zones. So these other things, like the uh, dot zone file here, um, that's actually for the root DNS servers. It helps us find everything else. These other zones are important to make things work as well. So we're going to create a new zone at the bottom. Zone. And we're going to do the example.com zone. So we do example.com. And now this, these files have, have to be done correctly. You need to make sure you put in the right number of semicolons and everything else like that. Pretty much every command in here has a semicolon after it. Every close, curly brace, everything has a semicolon. So just remember, put semicolons in everywhere. Type is master. So that means we're in charge of the file. Um, and the file name we're going to be using is data slash example dot com dot zone. It doesn't really matter what you call it, uh, but you just have to have it there. All right, so this data thing, what that means is actually in the data subdirectory of another directory. And if you scroll up to the top, you can see that the directory is var name d. So we're going to be in var name d data. And as you remember from right down here, our file is going to be called example.com.zone. And it's going to be for the example.com zone. So X out of there. And I go over to the var name the data directory. And I'm going to create a file called example.com.zone. Example.com.zone. All right. In this file, we put in a couple things. I like put in a little TTL until the time to live is three hours. <clears throat> and then I can tell it uh, the name server for my zone, which is going to be this zone right here. We'll do in NS, and we'll call this one um, server.example.com. Remember, every single time you put a com or an org or anything that's the last the top level domain, you want to make sure you have a trailing dot because if you don't, it assumes that you're using a relative name and it'll put it inside of your zone. So you get some really weird things. So if I'm doing the example.com zone and I leave off a trailing dot, it might assume that I mean server.example.com.example.com, which is really not what I mean. Okay, so that's in place. Now I need to create my startup authority record. So in SOA, and this is for the example.com.zone, 
And my email address will be, uh, let's call it admin at, except we don't do that, we do a dot for in place of the at, um, example dot com dot. And I do open parenthesis, and in here I give it a bunch of numbers. The first number is my serial number, and usually what we do is we give it the year. So I could do 2017, and the month 04, and the date the 19th, and then two digits for different updates within the same day. And I put a comment here, serial. All right. And then I put a bunch of other numbers, um, 10, 8, 2, 0. This is my way refresh. Refresh, if I can spell refresh correctly. Um, my retry. An hour and my expiration, which is 204. And my default TTL for these records, which would be one day 86400 default TTL. All right. Then I close this record. At this point, I'm ready to start creating entries. Now, the one entry I must put in there is the name server has an NS record, so it really needs to make sure it has an A record. NS records tell it the server to use, A records tell it a name to IP address translation. So, server is going to be um, in a I believe it's 10 to 230 to 150 one dot one. I'm not sure what my address was, but that's okay. And then I have a client machine also. And I'll give that an A record. So 10 to 230 dot Let's just go check my IP address real quick. If I do IP PPR, I can see that I am a 10.230.150.1. So I go back from there and change to 150.1. All right. And then I could put in other records. For example, if I decide that this is also my mail server, I could say, well, we're going to create a C name. So we call it mail host uh, in C name. I'll have these things line up. C and um, I could say that my C name, mailhost, so this alias mailhost is going to point to server. I could also do server.example.com if I wanted, um, just to make it line up better or be complete. <clears throat> but if I do uh, .example.com, I'd have to make sure I put a trailing dot here. Otherwise, it thinks it's relative. All right, so now I'm going to put an MX record. So um, for the this zone in MX, um, let's get a priority of 10, and we're going to send it to mail host. And so you can see that that provides some records. Okay, I'm going to exit out, and I try to start my DNS, and this is the time when you figure out if things been done correctly or not. So system CTL start name D. And it looks like it started. Now I want to make sure it's uh, running automatically on boot time. So I do system CTL enable name D. So it'll start on boot time. And I also want to make sure it can get through the firewall. So I do firewall CMD add service equals DNS. And I want this to be a permanent role, so I'll add the permanent one to it. All right, so now I have my DNS server up and running, and it's time to check it out. So I can do a dig command, dig at localhost. So I'm going to use my DNS server to test it out first of all before I change it. And I want to 
figure out what server.example.com is. So I do server.example.com. And it tells me that it is 10.230.150.1. So now we know that my DNS server is responding correctly for this. So let's try um, if I want to figure out what the MX record is. So when it's tmx, for example, .com, and it says that the MX record is mailhost.example.com, and then also tells me that um, server.example.com is a one. Um, it doesn't tell me what mailhost's C name is, so I can go check that out real quick too. So I'll do mailhost example.com and I can see that my mailhost.example.com points to server.example.com and then it tells me what server.example.com's IP address is. So I know these things are working and I have a DNS that's working. Now all I need to do is change it um, and you just need to go in and edit your entry in your resolve.com file. So I do a nano etc resolve.com file and change it to my IP addresses, which is 10.230.150.1. Now you can see in here that it was generated by Network Manager, so I would need to make sure I go into Network Manager and configure it there. Otherwise, when I restart my network, it might lose the DNS entry. By the way, this is how you do it, and that's how you configure DNS and also create a four zone.